Right, hello and good morning. Um, and for those uh, long-suffering subscribers of mine, uh, I'm sorry, but it's, it's it's my way, as you know. You know, these videos come up uh, as and when. But uh, good news, uh, there is completion to the uh, the, the blue project, the um, C90ZZ. Um, it's actually been complete for quite a while now, or almost complete, as these projects tend to be. There's still a few... Uh, sort of niggly little issues which I'll go over but it is largely complete um, and I've put well over 100 miles on it now um, but I've had other stuff going on I've been on holiday I've fitted out a boat um, and I've just had other things and issues with this bike that have um, led to something of a delay but um, it is finished now so um, I'll go through it I had to re-watch because it was so long ago um, the last instalment just to take through the changes but um, I shall do that now and here she is, finished. As you can see, it retains the cheapo pit bike exhaust, but it sounds good. And it's staying for the time being, because um, it'd be quite an expensive option. To change, I've left the rear seat off it, so it's got the exposed rack at the back, which I sort of prefer, and it's a bit easier. Um, right, uh, this foot peg, which is one solid bar that goes all the way through, I had to change. They were flat before. The ones that you see there are raised either side before they'd lie lower, and they were no good. So I had to change that. I got that second hand off a some kind of step through moped. The centre stand um, didn't work last time because of the increased uh, tyre sizes. So that is a CT90 part. Again, I bought off eBay. Basically, everything I mentioned is bought off eBay. These are off a of fizzy. They're just the um, front bars for a fizzy. As it happens, they fit perfectly. They're pretty much there just for looks. They would give a tiny bit of protection, but as you can see, certainly on the engine mounting, it's a bit spindly. So they, they're they pretty much just there for the, the aesthetics. I've changed the front mudguard. Before it was a unit that I'd cut down, but it was a little bit flimsy. So this is a slightly more uh, substantial effort, if you like. There is a problem with the front hub. It's originally, it's, at the moment, it's running the original C90 wheel and hub, but the brake hub that fits in is from a CT, and they don't properly match. So the wheel works at the moment, but it means that the gear, the uh, worm gear for the speedo, doesn't work. So I need a CT90 uh, wheel. I've got, um, I've got various other wheels but um, they're all 18 inch these are 17 inch wheels and I'm going to keep them that way so at the front as you see there it's got a high intensity LED light in the middle for safety reasons I'll go over, to, over that in a minute um, I've put on a Honda a crossbar brace and a Honda thing just for looks really which I think it sort of looks okay with the bike some people might disagree because it is the only bit of red on the bike but that, as you can see with the original CT, doesn't have that. I fitted that on. I quite like it. I can always take it off. One difference I made, if you remember, I had that silly uh, old Lucas um, hazard warning light switch there. I've changed that now. Um, like I say, I've got the... I've got this high-intensity light in front. I can turn that on solidly. It's an illuminated switch. Or, because these, uh, this switch gear is exactly the same as the other stuff I've used for the CT, the CT has got electric start, this hasn't. So if you see, I've just put some dyno on there, which is a nice little safety feature, and to utilise that switch, it's basically just a headlight flasher. So that's that. Um, all electric, the electrics uh, was pretty much the biggest single job on any bike rebuild, um, certainly the ones I've done. Um, so the electrics are all in and working well. 
Uh, I had a bit of problem with the uh, the chain. As you can see, the chain is a little bit loose. It is drivable or rideable. I rode it yesterday, but it's a little bit loose because um, it, it's on full tightness. So I need to have a link taken out, and I'm currently waiting for a link extractor, which I bought on eBay. So when that comes through, I'll take a link out and uh, torsion the chain up properly. It's just one link too big. Um, these little... Uh, these are fixed uh, little side panniers, if you like. I bought those originally for another C project that I had, but I never got around to using them, so I fitted them on both both my bikes. They're held up with those uh, leather straps that came originally with these that I didn't use. I use um, P-clips to hold those on. So they're actually quite... They, they do serve a purpose. You just take off those straps and that as a side pannier will roll down and it gives you a bit of room uh what else are ah, the seat <laughs> it was proving to be a bit of a pain but as you can see there i've got a stainless steel bearing uh hinge for a door really so that's as simple as that i just bought a door hinge done i had to foam out with some of this high density non-absorbent foam the inside put some of my uh, sort of um, U-covers or whatever you call them on there just to stop scratching. And it works very well and it's simple. And it does work as well with the seat there. But it only opens 90 degrees rather than whatever that is, 100. Um, so yeah, like I say, I've used this quite extensively actually. I took it on holiday, I took it on the back of my car with the boat on top of the car. It was a nice little, uh, almost Bond-esque setup that I had going on over in the holiday, so that was good. Um, but yeah, it's pretty much complete. Like I say, there's a small issue with the front hub, um, which I need to sort out. But again, I'm just, I'm just going to have to wait for parts for that. But um, yeah, it's a very nice little light, usable bike, uh, and I'm very happy with it. If you see here, this chain guard I've made... I basically just used some, there's um, a guy here on the farm, he does double glazed window uh, installations and conservatories and whatnot, and he's got loads of sort of U-bent metal pieces that are, go inside these windows. So I just found some of that, chopped it down on my chop saw, and it fits rather well. Uh, carburetor, I had some carburation issues. Um, the carbs, I've got several carbs here, but they're all meant to be forward swept, which means that you're idle. Uh, switch um, screws and things like that and other bits are meant to be accessed through this side but with that facing forward it makes it a real pain obviously having a back swept carb like this so um, basically I've just bought another carb exactly the same carb as I've got on my um, uh, CT a brand new thing it was whatever it was £22 on eBay um, and again I fitted uh, just a, a, a very simple um, air filter. The air filter I picked in red just to give another little hint of red to go with the, uh, you know, the, the foam pad at the top. But yeah, the carburetor works well. It gives me a fuel tap on the carb, which I didn't have before. And I've got fuel filter, which you can sort of see in the back there. Um, it's a bit of a pain, actually. This bike I've run dry twice now because... As I said in the previous video, the tank is supposed to have two pipes, one halfway at the tank, the other flush, as a reserve. Um, they're both cut off flush, so um, you haven't got a reserve. So I've actually run dry twice and had to do the walk, which is a real pain. So I fitted this, and I did previously carry a Trangia, this thing here in that and i know it looks a bit silly and people sort of say oh you've got a fire extinguisher on it etc but um it is so useful and almost essential so i might fit that somehow there or maybe get a different color or something but i do need something like that it needs a reserve because like i say i've done the, i've done the walk now twice um and yeah it's all road legal too which is um, a little bit unusual for me, but there we go. It's, um, it's pretty much road legal. I do have to do a bit of paperwork just to um, 
change the engine details. As you see, I've got a little pump as well in the front there. Which is just a bit of a touch. I hope I never have to use it, but I could. And I have got tire of spare inner tube and um, some kit. If I, if you know, it really came to it, I could change a fix a puncture on the side of the road. But that's not a job that uh, anyone would envy. But it is possible. So yeah, I'm very pleased with it. It's um, it's uh, the perfect job for just cutting a bag. So going on to um to new projects and new new things that you can look forward to. Um it's pretty much uh drawing to a close this summer now, which means that um I'll switch my attention from riding and enjoying bikes to building them again. Um I've been looking for months now, uh for well for a while before for a, a new project, but these C series Hondas are getting very expensive uh, and difficult to come by now. Um, they've shot up in price 100, 200 or more percent, uh, literally within the past year. But the end result, you know, the finished perfect bike hasn't shot up by that. It's just the projects, which makes it unaffordable, really, um, uh, to, to carry on with the, the C-Series at the moment. So I've taken a bit of a punt um, and I've bought a trailer load of rust, which I'll, I'll show you now. Righty ho, this load of rust here. Some of you eagle eyed spotters might know what these are. I bought three bikes, they're all the same model. I've, I've stripped them all down. They're small Hondas, as you can see. It is a Honda, so if you want to start guessing now, I'll tell you in a minute what, what models they are. As you can see there, it's a more standard tubular steel sort of lattice frame. Uh, and here, I kept the, the, the bikes came as three rolling chassis with only one engine between them. And that's the engine there. Single cylinder. Oh, it's doing a, a weird focus thing. Come on, focus in. There you go, if you see that. I've also been on eBay and I bought a few spare things. I bought a spare cylinder. A brand new cylinder, a spare cylinder head complete with cylinder. I bought a gasket kit and various other bits. So that is ready to turn my attention to uh, this winter. Um, so yeah, I'm going to be getting uh, down and dirty with the engine. Um, so I will now reveal what these future projects are. Right, well done to those who got it. Uh, they are Honda H100As, sometimes or often known as just the H100, as opposed to the H100S, which followed these. It was largely the same bike, just with a few changes. It's two-stroke, which is um, slightly unusual for Honda. Um, Honda was a big fan of the four-stroke. He didn't like two-strokes, but um, he came out with this two-stroke. I'm not going to go into the details of it. Google it if you want to. But it's just a little single-cylinder, 100cc two-stroke. So I'm hoping with that one engine, because again, it's difficult to get parts for these. But I've got three there, so I'm hoping to make at least two bikes. One sort of original is what is my current plan. That is, might, of course, change depending on what I find when I start digging a bit deeper into that pile of rust I've got behind me but I'm hoping to make one slightly original looking bike as much as I can without going crazy on the, on the expense and then probably doing a resto mod hoping to fit some kind of aftermarket four stroke engine in or maybe even two stroke um, but I'm thinking about maybe even putting a life fan in it will obviously involve some fabrication and bracket uh, mucking about and whatnot but um, I'll give that a go. So I'm hoping, like I say, that, that end the engine turns okay, as in statically. Um, I'm just hoping I haven't got any bottom end issues with it. Top end I can handle, bottom end, it might might be curtains for that. Uh, we'll see. Depends how, um, depends how deep I want to get into it. But that is all coming up. Um, as soon as, we, it's actually a sunny day today and I'll be out on the bikes. But um, it's probably going to be one of the last times this year. And then the clocks go back and the nights get dark and old Marky gets into his garage. Cheers for following and I'll, uh, I'll keep you updated. Take care. Bye.